Today, we become legends. The Year 10 Show Match between pros and community members at Worlds showcased not only the entire new Year 10 Conquest map, which I have a video out on already by the way, check my channel for that, it also showcased a handful of new and majorly reworked items that were brought by the players. In this video, I'm going to cover what these new items do and my thoughts on them. Of course, this is just a handful of the items coming to the game and the full patch notes are on Wednesday the 18th, so be sure to subscribe to the channel to catch my news videos when that time comes. But jumping into the items, first up we have Loki on a Stick, aka Shadow Drinker. This is a physical item that comes with power, flat pen, movement speed and a passive that when you kill an enemy god you gain 30% movement speed and invisibility for 3 seconds. This stealth is broken in the same ways it always is by firing abilities, basic attacking or taking damage. From the look of the stats this item will be on the katana tree and only available to assassins and warriors because of that. So no, unfortunately your ADC mains can't run around the fight invisible. This item in my opinion will either be insane or trash, I'm calling it now. It's a very snowball heavy item similar to Bloodforge in that you need to get kills for it to be good and it will likely cost a lot given the powerful effect. However, the stats are good and the effect could be game changing so I expect we'll see a lot of this item when it launches just because it's a really fun item as well. Similar to using Bloodforge Shield to escape after diving in for a kill, Shadow Drinker does that even better since you get 3 seconds of stealth to escape after assassinating a backliner. Next up we have definitely one of the better items I've seen in this reveal so far which is Tablet of Destinies. This is a new mage item that leverages mana for damage. With 90 magical power, 150 health and 300 mana base on the item, the passive stacks up on damaging enemy gods with abilities. These wisdom stacks make your abilities deal an additional 0.08% max mana as true damage per stack. These stacks are permanent and can only be gained once per god per ability and once per 2 seconds. This caps out at 50 stacks meaning you will be dealing 4% of your max mana as true damage on ability hits once this is fully stacked up. Given you can easily hit 3000 mana late game with a book of thoth build and this item, this will be dealing 120 true damage extra on every single ability. This item seems completely bonkers and the players in the event seem to agree with me as both mid laners rushed this first item and even both solo laners who were Yorm and Cthulhu bought this in their build as well. And as I said earlier, it's worth noting that Book of Thoth hasn't been removed or anything, so you can get both of these and maybe even Book of the Dead for a huge mana themed mage build that seems really strong. True damage is very scary. Next up, we'll take a look at a major item rework in the form of Breastplate of Regrowth. This is of course a reworked version of Shield of Regrowth, but with Breastplate style stats in mana, fizz protections and cooldown. The passive is unchanged, but this allows for regrowth to fit much better into solo lane builds and healer characters might like this item now over something like Breastplate of Valor or even over Glad Shield potentially. I can see Herc, Guan and a few other solo laners with healing really liking this item. Stone of Binding has also been minorly reworked into a full tier 3 item with beefier stats and the passive now scales with level to make it a bit more useful in the late game rather than just being an early game pickup like it used to be. This would appear to be the last remaining tier 2 item in the game, gone now. Another completely new item is up next as we have Arc Druid's Fury. This one comes with 35 of each protections, 300 health and 15 MP5, with a passive that gains a stack each time you take damage from an enemy god equal to 5% of your max health or more. Max of 6 stacks on this one and your next basic attack on an enemy god consumes all those stacks to deal 30 plus 2 per level in true damage per stack. So at 6 stacks that's 180 plus 12 per level. More true damage which is a little scary especially on a tank item like this but to get full value you do need to take a lot of damage. So gods with sustain might like this item a little bit more. Demon Blade is a rework of Wind Demon which is now on the Hidden Dagger tree which is the Deathbringer tree to make way for a new crit item we already saw in the keynote that's going to get added to the usual shuriken tree. The stats are unchanged, it's just been moved and redesigned visually. Assy got a minor rework to become more of an expensive late game luxury item with beefed up stats, the flat penetration removed and the passive improved. Wing Blade got a small but impactful change as well which makes it now affect all nearby allies with the slow immunity and movement speed which is huge for countering big AoE slows from the enemy team. This is basically a conditional Heavenly Wings at this point but you save on a relic slot which could be huge for supports in the new update. I expect to see this item a lot against slow heavy teams. And finally we have Prophetic Cloak which in my opinion is probably the most busted item we've seen. This comes with 25 of each protections, 150 health and 20% cooldown reduction. Already really good stats in my opinion depending on the cost of the item. But the passive is once every 10 seconds when you damage an enemy god with an attack, you gain a stack of 2 protections in an aura that corresponds to the damage type of your target. So hit a mage, get magical prots, hit a warrior, get physical prots etc. Once you reach 15 stacks of each this item evolves giving you mitigations based on your total protections. So this to me looks like a Hide of the Urchin replacement since it is quite similar to that item but it's just supercharged so maybe Hide of the Urchin has been removed but I'm not entirely sure on that. 
This item seems insane to me. It won't be that hard to stack up. You can somewhat choose which protections you want and play around it in that way, which is really cool, but will be very powerful. So if you need more physical, just keep hitting hunters, warriors, or assassins. And if you need more magical, keep hitting mages and guardians. But at max stacks, you're going to have 25 of each prots, 30 additional prots of random kinds. For simplicity, let's just say 15 of each, so 40 of each protections in total, 150 health, 20% CDR, and mitigations based on your protections. Not to mention the protections from the passive are also in an aura. The base stats alone are so much better than Spirit Robe and Hide of the Urchin, and depending on how much mitigation you get, this item could be outright broken. It doesn't state how much mitigation it is, unfortunately, but even if it's a small amount, this item is really good. If it's a lot, this is completely completely broken. And I'll quickly talk about the two items we already saw in the keynote just to complete the set. If you've already seen these ones in my previous videos, then you can click off now. Cannoneer's Curus comes with both protections, health and HP 5. We don't know exact numbers on this one. And the passive makes your next successful basic attack on a lay minion explode, executing it and dealing magical damage per level to all nearby enemies and gold to your nearest ally. With an internal cooldown, of course. Super good for solo lane wave clear and maybe pressure supports too, given that gold bonus that could be given to the ADC. And finally, we have Bladed Boomerang which has physical power, attack speed, and crit chance. Again, we don't know exact numbers, and this is the reason Wind Demon was moved to a different tree. This item's now going to be on the Shuriken tree. With a passive that causes your next basic attack to send a buff bouncing off the target onto the ground, which grants movement speed and crit chance when picked up. The effect has a short duration, but can stack, having potentially a lot of crit chance here. But that's all the new and majorly reworked items we saw in the show match. Let me know which ones you think will shake up the meta down below, and be sure to subscribe to the channel to catch all my new update videos as they drop. But that's it from me. Have a great day and peace out, you nerds.